The problem we're trying to solve is that we have to reduce global emissions by 40 to 50 percent in the next eight years so that we can hit our global targets by 2030 and then hit our net zero targets by 2050. And of course, we need sweeping policy change. We need companies to be making different choices. We need infrastructure investments. But there's also ways that we as consumers can accelerate the pace of change. A lot of the changes that need to happen are very, very big structural changes. But obviously, there is an element there of behavioral change. What we eat, how much we waste, how energy efficient our homes are, there are things there that we can control. What is our target outcome? In this case, it's uh, pro-environmental behaviors. I think the advantage of games and apps is that they can break down those really big behaviors into achievable goals. My name is Catherine Dunn. I am a journalist and I live in London in the UK. I've been a, an energy reporter in particular, but also kind of a climate reporter for years. I, I was an editor with Fortune for about three years where I mostly covered climate change. And I'm really interested in what it takes for countries, what it takes for economies, companies and people to actually kind of meet the goals that we've set out for ourselves. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I have to do is bring my dog for a walk. And on that walk, my favorite thing to do is to get a little coffee and stand in the park watching my dog run around, barking at all the other dogs, causing chaos. Griff, come here! She's completely ignoring me. How hard is it to bring in a reusable cup? You can see all these little like frictions there where I'm like, okay, I have to find the cup. Inevitably, I've left it in the bottom of a bag and it's disgusting. I mean, it seems kind of crazy that a reusable cup is just such a simple change that you can make. And yet I still struggle with it. The problem is that people don't know where to start when it comes to climate change. And so if you want to understand what you can do about climate change, starting with measuring your own personal carbon footprint, probably the best thing to do. So the carbon footprint in simple terms is the carbon connected to anything you do. Anything you eat, the transit you took that day, the energy you used in your home. On one level, it's pretty simple. It's the carbon you're kind of responsible for as an individual. But once you start to think about it, you realize that it is like the sum total of everything you interacted with that day. Luckily, now there are apps for that. The climate agenda and changing your behavior, these are tough long-term things to do and so we all need a little bit of support. My name is Christian Arno, founder of Pawprint, an app that helps you reduce your carbon footprint. My name is Sanchali Paul and I'm the founder and CEO of Joro. Joro is an app that helps you use the power of your spending to take action on climate change. There's a few ways we use gamification. Um, one is that your own emissions, you sort of see that progress over time. You can also see your progress versus others. So there's a leaderboard. And in the context of paw print, we separate people into teams. I would be more likely to do something because I wouldn't want to let you down. Part of it is making sure that individuals find financial value in it and other personal value in it as well. One of the most challenging things about climate change and about carbon is that they're invisible and distributed. And gamification is a way of making that feel immediate and satisfying to someone when they make progress. Gamification is essentially anything designed to make a non-gaming activity more fun. My name is Benjamin Douglas. I am a second year PhD student in the psychology department at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And we study uh, pro-environmental behavior and persuasive messaging, essentially behavior change. How do we, how do we motivate people to do things that they might otherwise uh, not do on their own? So in exploring just available apps on my phone, what you can find even in the App Store right now, is a lot of apps that will help you calculate your carbon cost. The effectiveness of an app is going to depend, obviously, on what's in the app. So if you are using things like points or leaderboards or progress boards, all those elements of gamification make people want to return, and therefore more likely it's going to be successful. There's persuasive evidence that gamification helps us learn. So if it's more fun, then you might actually want to do it. <laughs> And ideally, you would do those to the point where you feel like you kind of built up a habit.
I absolutely think everyone has a part to play in keeping the planet livable. If you're spending money, then you have the power to take climate action. You know, we're only going to vote a few times in the next decade, but we do spend money two to three times a day. And so if you spend money, you know how to take climate action if you have the Joro app. We all have a stake in the future, but the reality is that many people in the world have more pressing concerns. And that's why I think the reward element of which gamification is, is, is a part is really important to achieving the widespread spread change that's needed. Over the past several years, been this increased anxiety, and rightly so, about the effects of climate change. Really what we're seeing across the board is uh, people trying to find any solution that will work. I think people are looking for tools to understand how they can change their emissions and tools to better understand their emissions as well in a way that feels trustworthy. Gamification is one that has potential and because it has that potential to work, you know, it's another area we can explore.